Anderson, uh, welcome uh, to Gruen. We'll get to our panel in a moment, but first, Telstra is flogging 5G, and I'm excited. Just one question. What exactly is 5G? But what exactly is 5G? <laughs> exactly! It's like getting a much bigger cake with bigger slices for everyone. <laughs> that explains nothing! It's like going from a heavy medicine ball to a light one. <laughs> Hang on, 5G's gonna shrink my balls? <laughs> OK, does Telstra have any new ads that tell me what 5G does? Yeah, 4G's been amazing. I don't care about 4G! But now 5G's here. And you might not think you're ready for it, but you are. I am! <laughs> I'm ready for it! I just don't know what it is! Imagine what 5G will bring. <laughs> no! You imagine what 5G will bring and then tell me. Now you're talking to your granny as a hologram. Hi, hologram. Oh, hi, hologranny. <laughs> Sorry we didn't have the technology to invite you over. <laughs> They're so samey. Telstra is even repeating itself. This guy has been checking his computer fridge in Telstra ads <laughs> since 2013. <laughs> He's looking for the cake! <laughs> Time to welcome our panel, Todd Sampson, and from Campaign Edge, Dee Madigan. Karen Ferry, and from PwC, Russell Howcroft. <laughs> Since we were last on air, the two major supermarkets have rolled out eight collectible ranges. There's been Coles Little Shop 1, Coles Little Shop 2, Little Shop Christmas, Ushies, Discovery Garden, and if I list any more, I'm going to need another break. <laughs> One in three Australians have been collecting these tiny toys, and you know it's serious when the news deploys all its military metaphors. Coles has given customers their first hands-on look at the return of its Little Shop campaign, setting the scene for the fiercest battle yet in Australia's supermarket wars. This year, Woolworths was ready for the enemy assault. <laughs> you shouldn't laugh. I fought in the supermarket wars. <laughs> I don't like to talk about it, but there's no use crying over spilt milk. <laughs> Let's have a look at the brand new Woolies collectible campaign. Hey, guys! Whoa! Hey, ho! Let's go! Woolworths Discovery Garden. Get one seedling kit with every $30 you spend. Hey! Collect and grow all 24 veggies, herbs, and flowers. the joy of growing. That's why I pick Willies. Sure, it's fine when kids do it, yet when I do the same in my attic, it's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> well, legal Discovery Garden launching soon. Collect all the herbs. <laughs> Karen, if we all grow our own food, won't Woolies go out of business? I mean, that's the self-sustainability dream, but I actually think it's a really clever move from Woolworths because what it's doing is teaching a new generation of kids the value of fresh produce, and it's doing it by showing how hard it is to get it from, like, seed to three months of toil and turmoil into snack. It's kind of similar to, like, IKEA and the IKEA effect in that if you do all the hard work, you value something more, whether that's a Pax cupboard or a wonky carrot. And in a world where we're throwing away, like, half of our fresh produce, it creates this sense of worth and also elevates the value that we understand around that. We were pretty excited about Discovery Garden, so on the day the promo launched, we planted this Woolies deal. <laughs> Two weeks later, it looks like this. <laughs> Take that, Costa. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Woolies is just working out how to disappoint farmers at an early age. <laughs> Gee, would Woolies wish that they could go back to plastic ushies? So what it's doing, it's inoculating against the accusation that Woolworths is using too much plastic, because this is all environmental. It's fresh food people, it's right to Woolworths brand, but what it's also doing is long-term stuff. So Woolworths competition isn't just Coles and Aldi now, it's home-delivered, fully-made meals. And what this does is remind people of the joy of cooking from scratch. So I reckon their next promotion will also be 
cooking based. So, so businesses like this, will they have? They literally have a promotional calendar. So, what are we going to do for this next six week block? Then, what are we going to do the following six weeks? The following six weeks, like, and it is relentless. So coming up with a new idea is really tough to do. Once you've come up with a nice new idea like this, it's like the pressure to do something that trumps that becomes really, really intense, which is why the, the warfare thing, I know maybe it sounds over the top, but that is actually what it's like every day when you work in these businesses. There was a story recently where they found one of these Oshie things on the beach in Bali. Um, you know, eight million tonnes of but plastic go into the ocean. But to oh, be fair, oh, that, that, that was the rare bogan Oshie. <laughs> Yeah. And it was just on holiday. But, yes. but, you know, Coles, meanwhile, has its free collectibles range, a little shop. Well, free, insofar as it costs $30 to get one, or $2 for a little shopping basket, $4 for a collector's case, $8 for an apron and bag set, $10 for a little shop front, and $10 for a little shop trolley, which adds up to $34, enough to get you another free collectible. <laughs> Here's the ad that launched it all. Australia, Coles Little Shop has arrived. We've been making mini collectibles of your favourite big brands, like mini Pantene shampoo. For every $30 you spend at Coles, one free mini collectible is yours. Oh, I trust her. She's got glasses and a lab coat, which in ads <laughs> makes her a scientist. <laughs> Less than a year later, Coles was back with a sequel and updated shrinking technology. Little Shop 2 is bigger than ever. Yes, we've made 30 new amazing mini collectibles. One free mini collectible is yours with every $30 you spend at Coles or Coles Express. And this year, Little Shop has an amazing app, so you can unlock all of your mini collectibles into little dances. Ah, no! <laughs> but, yeah, I've seen a woman at Coles chuck a tantrum at the front desk because she got a duplicate item. Like... They only say it's targeted towards families because it creates a permissible behaviour that mothers can go, I'm getting these for my kids, even though they're the ones who are going feral at the swap meets. <laughs> and it just allows us to not feel like kids when we're collecting them, even though you're acting like it when you don't get your cheap oh, it, 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 It's powerful with adults, that's true, but it's very, very powerful with the kids. Fabulous pest of power. Um, it gets people... <laughs> Well, yeah, it gets people it's down... It's really it, good for the parents. Yeah, it, it, yeah. <laughs> but it gets, um, it gets the parents and the kids down the aisle. Uh, they're learning about brands. You know, that important thing that kids definitely need to do. Absolutely. Learning well, about brands. This is why, this is why it works. Because <laughs> That's not good. That's not right. But I reckon he's like, wrong. You, you know you brush over that. that like that. I love that, when you're looking at your kids innocently playing shop with some toys and just go, I could get some brands involved <laughs> in this. <laughs> That's, that, to me, is the dark side of it, right? I understand the promotion works. I understand the need to drive footfall. I get all that. But the, 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 if, and I'm victim of it, because my kids have collected all of them and I've been a part of the whole process. But the whole notion of l creating little shoppers or little consumers, it feels to me like we're like marketing grooming of young kids. And the reason they're using a, a, a kind of... You're shaking your head like, that's a good thing, Russell. I meant that as a bad thing. <laughs> I know. Uh, Todd, said, Todd, Todd said marketing grooming, and I was like, ooh, that's a powerful burn, and Russell's like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know. But if you're, if you're in the world, if you're in the world of brand marketing, yeah. that is a good but, thing. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good thing. And, yeah, and that's, it is. But why is that a good thing, Russell? Like, we because, don't because, to... yeah, you know, because brands, brands are where value lies. Brands is where profitability yeah. lies. But that's exactly but, why... A pack, a pack that was that big that's all, all of a sudden that big, it is going to speak like that. <laughs> Okay, okay. Of course it is. It's a little... <laughs> Please do not interrupt this. <laughs> Go on, Russell. The table is yours. Tell us more about this tiny voice. Because that's how, that's yeah. how children play, right? Uh. That is about... You know, I can swap this. It's, it is inter it's interesting to, of course, again, in brand marketing, you personify brands. You know, one of the, one of the things that you'll do um, when briefing and when communicating is you say, what's the tone of voice of this brand? It's a is, this is, is not contravening, but it's, it's sort of skirting around the restrictions we have to advertise to children. Uh, because you can't... You, you, kids at a young age don't have the cognitive ability to know that this is advertising or this is persuading them or not. They just think it... They take it at face value. And with these branded toys, they are definitely working on two levels. You're right. On one level, they're exploiting the notion of toys and how kids learn and how kids play. Yeah. But on the other level, they're predisposing them 
consciously or subconsciously to have a disposition towards certain brands. And when kids, when kids have that predisposition before they have critical thinking, that's not cool. Why are you looking at me now? <laughs> I just love that Russell's the only person who looked at the story of Goldilocks and went, what porridge were they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, there's an ad in that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Collectibles aren't just an Aussie obsession. Most of these choking hazards come from Unga, a Dutch company. Unga has released collectibles everywhere from the Czech Republic to Bulgaria. The company website says they're making toys to be traded on eBay in the 31st century. <laughs> 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 As if there's going to be a 31st century. <laughs> the anticipation of what you're going to get gives you that dopamine hit. It's a similar thing to gambling, you know, other addictions. You don't know exactly what you're going to get. So one, it drives repeat purchase. And the other thing, it allows them, it allows them to restrict supply. Because if you are missing some of the collection, you will go back and try over and over and over again <laughs> to get it, just like that. Now look, how did you feel when you pulled it out? Eclipse mints. <laughs> Good. And it speaks like this. <laughs> this one's, you know what I hate about this one? It's not even that much smaller than the normal eclipse. No. <laughs> it's barely mini. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, it is such, it is so, it is so clever as a way of hooking kids and parents into getting these things. It is super smart. It's been used from generation to generation and it, and it works. The, the, the reason is as well, it is a really practical one, is you, you have a collection to show people and it's very hard to show a collection of really big things. So, so the, literally, it's why miniatures work as well. And you'll see with all these collections, as part of the, the um, um, giveaway, there'll always be a book or a folder to show them in. So it's, it, there's a really logical reason for it. Uh, the brands involved in Little Shop even released their own advertising around the collection. <laughs> OK, that is better than my Big Shop Chobani yogurt hair clip. <laughs> One of the weirder brands to take part in Little Shop 2 was a breath-scented toilet cleaner. Now we can switch scents from apple to water lily. Funky, isn't it? Yes, but there's a breath one. New Scent Switch, a scent of green apples that with every flush transforms into water lily scent. Scent Switch, only from breath. Hold on, am I supposed to use that toilet while he's DJing? <laughs> People go there to drop one thing, mate, and it isn't a beat. <laughs> Who would even want a tiny toilet cleaner? <laughs> we would. <laughs> I know. Russell, what kid wants a tiny toilet cleaner? <laughs> this is hugely powerful what's going on here and where it's so interesting is that the supermarket gets the brands to pay to be involved. Russell you're saying that like that's a big celebration and a good It is <laughs> absolutely it is it is in a in the marketing sense it is it's yes, but very it, it, particularly very fun. now though where you've got shops like Audi and that who pride themselves on brands you don't know it's actually more important than ever for companies like Woolworths and Coles to say these are the brands that, you know and trust. Th that, that's right. So you are getting you're getting extra footfall you're getting people's the, ba the baskets increasing, and they're buying brands. Why? Because literally, you've got a physical toy which reflects your brand. Right? So that increases the saliency. It increases the connection that you have to that brand. Yes, you're collecting it. You're playing shop. All of that stuff just contributes to the long-term value of that product. I know, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. Like, yeah. but when they're that young, yeah, but toy age, yeah. toy age, yeah. Russell, I, I think they don't have the they're critical not, facilities. They're not, they're not spending their money. They're not spending their money. Their parents are spending their no, money. No, but the point... Karen's father oh. is collecting them and putting them above his... OK, fridge. Karen's father <laughs> is the anomaly. <laughs> he is the anomaly. No, 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 no. They... I collect them. I've got, like, yeah. 29 of Miss Mulatina Fresh. The parents... <laughs> the... The parents Do you are want making a mini the toilet decision. cleaner? <laughs> You're making the decision. Yeah, I've, got a, I've got another one that hasn't been opened. But do you know, Will, you, you were, you're, you're talking about the toilet cleaner. <laughs> he 
Well, that's true, you toilet DJ. <laughs> well, that's the other clever part of the campaign, right? Is because it's collectible and you get it, you get a thing that shows you what you're collecting. They can restrict, and they have, they can restrict supply of certain products. For example, my kids were busting us <laughs> to get them the the White King toilet gel. That little what? <laughs> they were, we were going there to get it and get it and get it. And then while we were searching for that, I then read in one of the uh, trade magazines that their profits, their sales mm -hmm. went up 50% yeah. during the little yeah. shop right. promotion. Right. I imagine that parents are quite happy with the fact that there is a bit of a game going on in the physical world. Yeah, where they're actually playing shop and they're swapping with their... They're going to the, the playground. Oh, I'm serious about that. No, I, I love the... it, but I just love any sentence that starts with, I've got no evidence <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. of this. Yeah. Well, and I, I imagine. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I reckon most parents are sick of standing on the bloody things when you go to the toilet in the middle of the night. Yeah. Well, if you want to clean that toilet, you know you need... <laughs> All these promotions have exactly the same conditions. Spend $30 to get your little bit of landfill. Except in 2014, when it was $20. Inflation. Yeah, and we know it works. 23% um, of shoppers spend more um, because they want to get there. They want to get over the $30 threshold in order to get their, you know, their little... <laughs> their little <laughs> thing of breath. <laughs> I mean... I'm so excited. I <laughs> Oh my Just god. Just get the feeling that Russell's office is soon going to have a toilet DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Every breath. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line, both Woolies and Coles have recorded profit increases since the collectibles promotions started. Challenger brand Aldi Australia says it has no plans to join the freight, which is why I had to make my very own tiny Aldi special buy chainsaw. <laughs> 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 Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Visa and Facebook are 2019's most valuable brands and they all trade in one resource, your data. Google, coming in at number three, is more than a brand. It's a verb and it's vast. Google Calendar knows what you're doing. Google Maps knows where you're going. Google search knows what you're thinking. But don't worry, because Google's slogan is don't be evil. <laughs> oh, no, that's right. They got rid of that in 2018. <laughs> Wonder why. Here's a new Google ad you might have seen on TV or in the pre-roll of a YouTube clip. Then again, halfway through a YouTube clip and again at the end of a YouTube clip. <laughs> By the way, fun fact, Google owns YouTube. <laughs> Today. Catchy song, you know who loves it. <laughs> Google is Australia's most popular search engine. Bing is a very distant second, which I know because I binged it. <laughs> the best advertising marketing strategy that exists anywhere on the planet, free. They've been giving it away, and when we get free stuff, we act completely irrationally. And because it's free, we give them everything. They're like a drug dealer that gives us drugs, and then we give them everything. <laughs> and, and Just for the record, I have never met that drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> People say that all the time. You know, they give you the first one for free to... <laughs> that is not the model okay. of drug dealer. Okay. But, but, that, that, but, that, but that is... If it is, you'd only go to drug dealers once. <laughs> This ad is part of an international campaign. In the US version, you'll see someone who wants to be an astronaut and a company with enough money to afford the rights to a Beatles song. Help, you know I need someone. Help. Russell, what does it say about Australia that Google think our greatest aspiration is brunch? Because <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, we aspire to, you know, swim with our friends. We aspire to the sun. We, th this, is, this is the Australian thing, for sure. 
Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense for us to, um, for a Google to advertise you want to be an astronaut. It's a bit sad on one level, but also very understandable. <laughs> very sad on yeah. all of Yeah. <laughs> but, but... Why would you want to bloody go to space, mate? Yeah, yeah. Bloody, bloody yeah. Australia's you to... bloody, bloody <laughs> best bloody country <laughs> in the bloody... Yeah. Yeah. Why would you want to bloody stop... Yeah. Stop the rockets, mate! Bloody exactly. stop the rockets, stop the rockets guys, mate! Hey? Yeah. Turn them back, mate! Turn yeah. them back! I know. Bloody aliens coming here, taking our <laughs> avocado toast. <Yeah. laughs> I'm interested in the lack of tech in that tech ad. Those cafe patrons seem to be making eye contact with each other. <laughs> Oh, gross. Where's everyone's phones? But I do love that dog. I'd actually prefer to see the dog's search history. And with the dog thing, dogs have, like, a code in advertising. So if you put a dog in a fly spray ad, it means that it's therefore safe to spray on your kids. And if you see any ad with a dog in it, it's usually for a company that have done something really terrible to people. <laughs> and that was the dog's choice. 